Welcome to the first episode of More Than The Mat. My name is Josiah, host of the Fanco Wrestling YouTube channel. But if you're a Fanco fanatic, you probably already know that. Now, today we're going to be switching things up. See, I'm not doing any of the interviewing. Our host of More Than The Mat, Jake Hart, is going to be interviewing me about some pretty hard-hitting questions, including the origins of Fanco and some of the businesses I actually started before Fanco Wrestling. On top of that, we go in depth into some of my personal life, as well as sharing some exciting news that recently happened. I know you're going to enjoy this episode of More Than The Mat, so let's stop stalling and, oh, wait, nope, that's the wrong show. Let's get into the conversation and hand it over to Jake. You're listening to Fanco's More Than The Mat, a podcast that tells the stories of what the nation's toughest athletes are doing off the competition mat. And now, your host, Jake Hart. Before Fanco Wrestling, you had you had mentioned in one of your videos, the one where you're promoting your Patreon, it was brutally honest uh, about how you had done 15 businesses before this. So uh, what were some of those businesses that you had started? That's a great question. So whenever it's, it's a lot of fun looking back because and I look at this with like so many other entrepreneurs, a lot of them you know, you see their main success, like a, a Ray Kroc of McDonald's. He, he didn't actually like start McDonald's and there's actually a whole story that goes into that uh-huh. until he was in his like late fifties, but he had all these other businesses before that, that were kind of, you know, quote unquote failures. And, you know, so there were some successes throughout it and some failures. And that's kind of how like I look at things and, and I'm still working to grow Fanco to make it a, a huge brand for wrestling fans. But before Fanco, I had a lot of different businesses dating all the way back to when I was in like the fifth grade. And Mm -hmm. a lot of them is funny because they were kind of surrounding business or surrounding wrestling. Like for example, uh, in the fifth grade, there was a fundraiser. Like we were, we had a fundraiser to raise funds for our like uh, youth wrestling program. And one of the things that we did was sell these things called smensels. And I don't know if you remember or I, I like, I don't know if that's a thing that was like just around me back in Pennsylvania or if it was like everywhere around the country, but it's basically like pencils that have a scent to them. <laughs> okay. So, so like it smelled like orange or it smelled like uh-huh. root beer. That was the best one. It was root beer. And so okay. I had these pencils, these smensels that I started selling to other classmates and I had a giant bucket of them and there was like a dollar or two per smensel. And like whenever you're in fifth and sixth grade, it's like, oh, sure. Like maybe you have a dollar from from your chores or whatever from your uh-huh. parents. And so I, I love that. Like it got me excited. I was making some money, even though it wasn't my money. It was for the wrestling program. And from there, the following year, I actually started a company where I sold like random supplies where I actually like school supplies for kids where I made these stress relievers and like that I saw there was a student store where you could buy certain items and I was like I can make those things and sell them myself so (laughs) that's what I did and I did like I made it a little bit cooler I had these different designs and that's kind of where my marketing background started too because in like Adobe or in like paint or something I, I or Microsoft Word, I created this flyer and put it up on lockers. Ritzko, uh, I forget what is the name of my company, but Ritzko Supplies. And uh-huh. so I said it was like a dollar per item. And I put them, plastered them up all over the place on the lockers and people started giving me money and I would do that for them. Well, then my teacher in sixth grade, she was actually a substitute teacher at the time mm-hmm. and filling in and she took it down and she said, you're not allowed to sell these things. You're not allowed to sell items in school. I'm like, are you serious? So that's, that's how my first, or one of my first businesses got shut down. All right. Oh, what? <laughs> that's and messed it was up. Crazy. It was messed up and I couldn't believe it. And that wasn't the last business that got shut down like that. Of course. Because go forward to high school and I had a, a bunch of things in between, you know, I, like cutting grass. Like I consider that kind of, um, you know, it's, its own sort of business, like cutting neighbor's lawn, shoveling mm-hmm. that, that thing. Um, and, and then in my she was my freshman year of high school for the finals of certain exams, I decided to make study guides where I like I'm writing. I wrote down all the notes and p- people actually bought my study guides because they were like, well, I need to study for this anyway. And I sold them for like five bucks or something like that. And kids were buying them. And then 
uh, all of a sudden, that was another business that <laughs> somebody stole. Because I, I actually on the bottom, I said property of Josiah Ritzko, and I like kind of copied and printed them out. Yeah. Well, then somebody bought one and started selling them for their self. And I'm like, are you serious? So there's like a lot of these business lessons that you learn, like uh -huh. intellectual property, people stealing those things. Um, and, and the Dean found out about that, about me selling study guides. And there was nothing bad about it. I wasn't giving uh -huh. out test answers. It was like straight up, like you can study from this guide and learn for your finals. Yeah. Well, the Dean found out about it. And for whatever reason, the, the Dean of the of my high school didn't like me, uh, didn't like me at all. And, and which is like one of the only teachers it, it, who just wasn't a fan of me. And of course it was, you know, the Dean, uh, <laughs> well, of course, of course, had a target and, out for you. He had a target out for me. I mean, I just have stories on that. But anyway, he he found out about it and he he almost tried shutting it down. But school was already out. So it, it was over at that point. I don't so, see. I don't see the big deal in all that. I, no, I don't no. understand. But kids just trying to make is, a buck. Exactly. And you learn lessons through all these things until I got to college and I started another uh, business where it, it was or. I tried starting a business called the bro Olympics. And mm. this was, this was going to be a fun one. It was, uh, in my, in my, a couple of years prior to that me and my buddies got together and we basically had these lawn games with can jam and cornhole and mm. a, a spike ball. And I actually created it into an event. I had like a manual for it and everything like this is how, you know, this works. I've created a trophy and it was like a blast, like to be able to create. And so I started like actually marketing. This is like, I'm going to come up with this event called the bro Olympics. Well, uh, a couple, about a month or so into that in the summer, I received a letter in the mail from the United States Olympic committee saying, you have to cease and desist. Otherwise we're going to sue your butt. <laughs> and so that business got shut down. <laughs> What? I don't yeah, know, because how does that even happen? It, it's it's crazy how they found out about it, which is just the the you know like how, how do you yeah. find out about just some local event called the Bro Olympics? And, yeah. and there was this whole like the, I I actually uh, one of my best friends back in Pennsylvania is um he's studying law and his parents are lawyers and judges and so like they kind of took a look at like the notice and and found cases to like potentially counteract that but the thing is like when you're a college kid you don't have thousands and thousands of dollars yeah, to spend on course. lawyers and to combat the one of the biggest organizations in the united states but kind of a fun story that you know eventually kind of pushed me towards uh, fanco right. and yeah. like i guess the last one that i had was just starting a couple other youtube channels that i mm -hmm. i created in the meantime uh, until finally i i landed on <laughs> fanco wrestling so i know that was a lot but like i i just no. had so many businesses that i started no that's really interesting no I, it's cool to see you have that entrepreneurial uh mindset to you just like constantly thinking of different ways to just market yourself make money uh Fun fact, uh, I was a little similar when I was younger, uh, maybe not to the extent of Bro Olympics or anything like that. But uh, I used to, do you remember when duct tape wallets and everything were really big? Yes. Like that phase of uh, life, of society. Yes. So I was making duct tape wallets all the time. And we had these, uh, like we had a similar like school store where like you had like tickets. So if you did yeah. well in class or something, you would get like little paper tickets. So I would make duct tape wallets and I would sell them for the tickets uh, to kids at school and everything. And like, it was like the fifth, fifth or sixth grade uh, when I was doing this. And then, you know, I would end up going to wrestling camps and, uh, uh, what's, I think one wrestling camp, I made like 70 bucks just making wow. duct tape wallets. Uh, and then, you know, moved into like, you know, hats and all this stuff. Uh, it, I was homeschooled for a couple of years, so I had a lot of time on my hands. Yeah. So it was actually a really fun little endeavor. Uh, but where do you think you got this like entrepreneurial mindset? I think to be honest with you, it goes to a lot of my family. Like my family mm -hmm. is very entrepreneurial and, and I like, didn't realize that growing up, you know, like what the businesses that my family started, like my dad is an entrepreneur himself. He started his own uh, insurance company and has his own agency back in my hometown. My uncle has his own a carpenter, carpenter business um, where he, he just has these incredible designs that he, uh, that he builds out. Mm -hmm. My cousin uh, just actually started his own landscaping business a couple of years ago. And then 
uh, as well as that, I have, I have a cousin who does a lot of the like beach body fitness and she's entrepreneurial mm-hmm. there. My, my aunt, like I just have so many people I think that surrounded me with the entrepreneurial mindset that kind of instilled this on me. And so mm-hmm. it's like, that's where I, I think I got a lot of that business side. And then like the creativity side of it, like, so like if my dad's the entrepreneur, my mom's like kind of the creative. And so I would always have like a lot of these creative projects. Right. So like I can just have like a, a fun little business, but like, what's the, what's the little twist on it? Where's the creative what part makes of that? You different. And that's kind of, yeah. What makes me different. And like that, that kind of uh, is where like, like, I guess like my mom brings that creativity and it, it mm-hmm. all kind of like mesh together. It's, it's funny you bring that up because it's not like a question I necessarily like think about a lot but it's Mm -hmm. definitely like that's why no yeah definitely you're a product of your environment and there's actually in my creative writing class he would give us like prompts at the beginning of class and they were meant to like he would give us like five minutes to do it knowing that we wouldn't have enough time to actually finish writing about it but it was supposed to be like a like a jump off point for an essay uh Mm -hmm. and one of the questions was uh one of the prompts was in what ways do like you see uh your parents in yourself And I wrote about that. And I honestly, for like weeks and weeks and weeks, like I just thought about it. Like I started noticing like little details from like both of my parents that were in like in me. So it's cool that you notice like, you know, you got the entrepreneurial side from your dad and then the creative side from your mom. So I think that's really uh, cool to hear about. So uh, moving into the Fanco origins, obviously, Mm -hmm. you know, everyone would like to know a little bit about it. So you started Fanco around 2019, and uh, you stated in your um, uh, video promoting the Patreon channel how uh, you wanted to put a positive twist on um, on your con- on wrestling content. So, what is so important to you about having that positive twist? Yeah, so the the positive twist is super important to me because whenever I was in college, I would listen to wrestling podcasts all the time, uh, and the personalities on there, I, I, I enjoyed it, right? Like I enjoyed listening to all this wrestling content. However, the one thing I kept noticing from like certain personalities was just, they would like degrade other athletes. Like, oh, this guy's a turd. This guy's a scrub, uh, whoever it is. Like, right. Like if you're looking at, at, a, at a Penn State lineup and like you have all their four or five, like incredible national champions. And then one guy who maybe, quote unquote, just qualifies for nationals is like the, the scrub of the lineup is what they would say. And to me, that rubbed me the wrong way all the time, because I'm like, okay, these are division one athletes. And and even if you want to just look outside of division one, like a collegiate athlete who's going to college, dedicating his time to the sport, to something that he cares about and is passionate about. And all of that, that just goes into the sport of wrestling. Oh, and then on top of that, he's got classes to take care of. He has a social life he's trying to uh, figure out. He has all all these things going on. And then we're just going to call him a a scrub. I'm like, no, like it it always rubbed me the wrong way when, you know, they call guys turds or (laughs) scrubs. And that's why, like, I was like, I I don't like that. I don't like that. And, And on top of that, certain things would happen where I would hear personalities like, talk down to wrestling fans where like if you didn't know what was going on for example with like the the world team trials or like it's, people would ask like how do you make a world team which like still between me and you like is it the easiest thing to understand the process and yeah, so of course people would ask questions and they would like talk down to them like they were dumb and i'm like that's a legitimate question that somebody has and so yeah, like, like you're for coming me, to these people yeah. for information mm-hmm. you're coming to learn about the sport like why are you Act, yeah exactly right and so i can remember like instances like that where i was just walking to class i had my headphones in and i'm like i don't like that i don't like how that came about and so that's why like when i started fanco i said i need to have a positive twist and on top of that like i'm just a positive person in general mm-hmm. i don't really like to speak negatively about others or anything like that so like it just comes from like me and my personality but also that's where it comes from of course yeah. And you talking about how like they're calling guys turds and like saying they suck and everything like, OK, listen, like I wrestled for four years on a, a division one program. I never started, but, you know, like less than one percent of guys make it to especially D1 wrestling. There's right. less than one percent of guys that make it that far. And, you know, I never started or anything, never went to the NCAA tournament, but I could probably, you know, 
go toe to toe with a good amount of kids. You know, it doesn't <laughs> you're mean still, right. You're still one mean, of the toughest of the toughest in yeah. the country, and, and like th- that's the thing too is like uh, uh, so many wrestling personalities um, and and people who criticize. You know, you do have guys who did wrestle in college. I didn't wrestle in college, so mm-hmm. wh- why should I have a right? to exactly like I-, I can still criticize you know certain like oh like his, his single leg was a little off or his double leg or or he he looked a bit off like there's if you're there's getting criticism. a little nitpicky yeah yeah but then there's like attacking somebody and, and then you think like there there are parents out there who listen to you know they want to hear their their son talked about in a, in a good way right like maybe he mm-hmm. didn't have the the best match but maybe we just don't talk about him or or maybe there's something else that he did that's that's kind of good that we can talk about. When you hear parents uh, and, and grandparents and, and family that like listen to these shows, like it, it should really be like I, I don't like I again there are legit criticisms you can have of certain mm-hmm. technique and wrestlers, but when it becomes like personal, like calling somebody a turd, that's yeah. when it becomes like out of bounds for me. I think that also stems from. Like, you know, the bigger name uh, sports analysts, like on ESPN Sports Center, mm-hmm. it's so common to hear them talk, like even like NFL players, you know, like, oh, uh, what's it called? Joe Flacco. He's washed up, you know, right. which maybe sure. But, <laughs> you know, that guy's dedicated his entire life to the sport of football and you you're sitting behind a desk. You really think right. you have a, a right to <laughs> right. say that his career's you know, done. Right. No, you know, that you're exactly right. And with that too like it's like you these guys are college athletes right like there's i I think there's a difference with like a professional Mm -hmm. and a college athlete you have like 18 to 25 year olds i guess the the age just went up and up yeah Yeah. (laughs) but i was gonna say 18 to 22 year olds right in college like these are college students and and some of them Mm -hmm. like literally just got out of high school last year right yeah like i think that's a difference too is the quote unquote amateurness to them, even though like D one, yeah, the they're not making wrestling, millions college, of dollars. So right. yeah. wrestling is the like, college wrestling is the, the highest level of the sport folk style wrestling. Mm-hmm. Like, so it is considered pro in a lot of ways, but like they're still college students. Exactly. And I think people lose sight of that sometimes, but you know, what are you going to do? A common theme in some of your videos is you do a good job of highlighting these like lower con- like these, uh, smaller conferences i wouldn't i don't want to say lower these smaller conferences such as like the mac and socon that don't really get a lot of attention uh so what about those smaller conferences why is that important to you to bring attention to them absolutely so everybody loves talking about penn state and iowa Mm. right like they're two of the dominant programs in college wrestling have been the last 10 years and, and beyond that Oklahoma state, right? Like in, in, in ACC, Virginia tech and NC state, one of my favorite rivalries in college wrestling, but then there are over 70 D one teams and not a lot of them get a ton of attention. And like, first of all, like I remember again, whenever I was in college, I would look at certain comments on social media. It was like, why don't you talk about this program? Why don't you talk about this guy? He just had a good weekend. And mm-hmm. like, just because he's maybe he's from a, a smaller school. And I was like, yeah, you know, they do deserve some attention. And like, and it's true because there are a lot of great things that they have going on over the weekend uh, or, or over the, the course of the season, yeah. but they don't get the big media attention. And maybe they don't have the big draw of like a Penn state, but how are they going to get the big draw unless they get some sort of attention? And so I think what really helped me there is I worked at Campbell University from 2019 until 2021. And so I worked there for a few years and I really became embedded in, in SOCON and in the smaller conference and man, like Jake, the storylines there are just so incredible. But then you'd go outside of that and, and you talk to like even guys who are our big wrestling fans and they had no idea what's going on. Yeah. But I realized that more as as I marketed Campbell and like I was the social media guy and the marketer mm-hmm. there, the more that I shared these stories about those wrestlers through Campbell, the more that people became invested in it and excited about it and and more excited in the Campbell versus App State rivalry. And so I wanted to really bring that and show that in my videos on Fanco because there's a lot of fun stories there. There's a lot mm-hmm. of rivalries. There's a lot of competition. And 
a lot of times, right? Like when I'm looking at a video is, you know, like if, if I just have Penn State or Iowa in the title, it's going to get clicks. People are going to yeah. click it. They're going to watch it because they love the programs. But like, for example, if I had like a smaller program just in the title, I found like a lot of times it may not get the clicks. But if I found a twist on that, there's where that kind of creative twist comes in. Like, for example, five biggest performances from the weekend. And maybe one of them is Spencer Lee. The second one's Gable Stevenson. The third one is Josh Heil from Campbell, mm -hmm. who uh, maybe he he gets overlooked because he's in the SOCOM, but man, he just had an incredible weekend. Like, so like I can bring I found ways to bring in the smaller schools while still making it a fun and entertaining conversation. And I've found that it it really has helped grow the conversation su supporting those smaller programs mm -hmm. in conferences yeah no uh definitely i mean you, you mentioned josh heil and then you also got guys like josh milner and yeah who was the 97 from kent state that uh ended up getting third a few years ago at ncaa's oh there was kyle connell kyle uh kyle connell like guys like that you know i didn't even hear about kyle connell until ncaa's and then right. all of a sudden he's like top of the podium and i'm like wow look at that like you know you're doing a good job of uh, giving these guys that should be getting attention uh, uh, that weren't getting attention before you're giving them attention now. And I think that's good in the way of growing the sport. You know, it's not the NCAA isn't all just big 10 and ACC and, you know, big right. 12 stuff like that early day. You mentioned uh, working for Campbell. Uh, you were their social media guy, right? Yes. So uh, what was your job like for Campbell? My job was great. I, I came uh -huh. on in 2019. Coach Colat hired me on to the program. And from there, like they they had a few thousands followers. Like they were a they're again, they're a smaller program, a smaller school. However, their fan base is rabid. They mm. are such an exciting fan base and they support their programs like like their program like mad to fighting camels. And I, I really like kind of thrived off that and through that season, like there were so many solid wrestlers on, on the, the team that year that were just really doing well. And so I really wanted to tell the stories of guys like Andrew Morgan and Chris Cober and Josh Heil and Quentin Perez. These were all guys who were mm -hmm. doing solid, That's not just in the right SoCon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but outside as well. And I wanted to tell those stories. And so I found ways to do that through the social media, through Instagram and Twitter and Facebook telling these stories uh, and, and the, the great part was like being a part of that staff is under coach Colette and under coach Scotty Sentez. like Scotty Sentez is in my opinion, one of the most like innovative college wrestling coaches with all the things that he comes up with to like grow the program. Mm -hmm. And through that, that help, like, and through that kind of nur nurturing, like I was able to use my skills along with their skills to really push the program uh, social media forward and like we went from like you know they, they still had a, a decent following before i was there however kind of like once once we started working on on certain things we were literally top three social media in the entire country well, and the go. only reason we weren't number one or two is just because penn state and actually i, I beat penn state on, on in many stats which i love well, there you go. um even though chip I'm a on penn your shoulder state myself yeah <laughs> but it's because like ohio state just has such a you know, 40, 50,000 students mm -hmm. that go to the school and there's so many graduates and alumni. So like, obviously they're going to have a big following, but our engagement was like through the roof, just because of the content we were producing, because we weren't producing your average run of the mill, boring wrestling content. We were mm -hmm. finding ways to make it fun and exciting for not just for Campbell fans, but for like all wrestling fans. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, so Campbell, I think, is one of the most underrated programs in the country. I wrestled, I I wrestled so many different Campbell kids. Every time, every time, uh, I don't think I wrestled one Campbell kid twice. And wow. every time I wrestled a Campbell kid, uh, I hated it. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> they just keep going. I think they got it from Colat. Just keep coming at you, coming at you. And I think uh, the fact that you were able to grow a program like that, that you know, maybe not a lot of people really heard of until a few years ago you're able to get people to know about them. That's really great. Just growing the sport. Uh, so what attributes from that job with Campbell have you uh, brought to Fanco? So many. And that's the, the great thing is 
again, I started Fanco in January of 2019. I started working for Campbell and I believe it was May or June of that same year. And back then I thought I was good at videos and social media mm-hmm. and, and graphic design. I thought I was good. And, and by many people's standards, I, I was good. It, looking back on my skills back then, I was very below average. But yeah, however, of course. However, like your view of yourself is typically like a lot lower than what others think you. At least that's like what I, I think. Or, or uh, like you think worse of yourself than like what others would look at you, you know? And so I thought I was doing good until I started working with, you know, the, the program to improve these skills. And it was, it was always Scotty Sentez, Coach Scotty, it, like in my corner, like he'd look at a video and he'd be like, mm, can we make it better just like here? Can, like, like I would be done with a video editing or graphic. And I, like, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Like, this is the coolest thing ever. I was so excited to show, you know, everybody in the program. And then like, oh, that was cool. But like, what if we did this? And I'm like, I'm just thinking in my head, like, are you serious? Like, I just worked <laughs> like eight hours on that. And I thought it was like amazing. But then even though it was tough, like at times, right? Like when you, when you get those criticisms, like it sucks to hear that. But then you look back after you make the changes and after you hear the criticisms and you're like, oh yeah, that's, that definitely needed to be done. And I'm glad that I made those changes and critiques. So yeah. definitely challenging myself was like an attribute. I believe I, I took from that and having like others challenge me, right? Mm-hmm. Not just being like, my work's the best. This is incredible. My videos are great. My graphics are great. But like, how can I improve? Like, how, how can I make this better? So that was important. Being able to tell wrestling stories definitely was another attribute that was important, right? Because like I said, it was a smaller program, but we sell great stories and people wanted to hear great stories. And so taking that and then just through tests and tribulations and, and just straight up practice, right? When you do 10,000 hours or something, you're going to do better at it. You're going to be better than you were before. If you do 10,000 pushups in a year, uh, which like for one year, that was one of my goals, like do 10,000 pushups. You're going to be able to do solid pushups by the end of the year. When you do 10,000 hours of video editing, you're going to be better than you were when you started at hour one. And just that practice and repetition and constant challenging definitely like improved all those skills. So by the time, that and I was able to bring that into Fanco was was the great thing, right? Like I was able to take these skills that I learned from Campbell into my business through Fanco Wrestling, which was mm-hmm. just so like helpful for me and, and really like just made Fanco better overall. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, you mentioned how like it kind of was discouraging maybe to hear those critiques, but you know sometimes it's what you need, like just a different set of eyes to be like, well, maybe this isn't as great as you may think it is. Yes. And I mean, it's kind of the same with wrestling. Like, you know, you got to be coachable, you know, you're not mm-hmm. going to get better at wrestling if you're not willing to listen to your coaches and let them critique you. And, you know, you actually listen to them and try to work on those areas that they uh, are telling you you're not succeeding in. And it's the same thing with your editing. You know, if the guy watching, it's like, okay, well, I haven't edited it at all, but I don't really like that part, you know? Well, right. All right. Well, let me go fix it. So, I mean, that's the only way you're going to get better. No, exactly. And I've always been like coachable in my mind's Mm -hmm. been like able to be like, you know, mended and changed, which is like, I I think is an important attribute to definitely be able to learn. And like the funny thing is like, I came in my first week at Campbell and Scott, uh, somebody was trying to hand me a shirt and Colette goes, did he earn it yet? And I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, uh oh, I better make sure that I do my job. Like he, he, his, the type of boss he was, was the type of coach he was, right? Like he Definitely. took his coaching and his bot, like he's just a great leader. And uh, it was similar, you know, with, with Scotty, different leadership approaches, but still it was like, is this video good enough yet or not? Mm-hmm. Is this graphic good enough? I don't know. And we, we were able to challenge each other uh, on, on certain things and just make, the best, you know, content that we could to, to promote the program. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that part where you said Colette, uh, Colette was like, did he earn it? It actually makes me think of a time uh, I went to J Rob whenever I was like 15 yeah. and, uh, we were doing like sprints around the track. And there's this one kid that was like, you know, way behind everybody. He was really slow. 
and uh, he was like struggling to finish. And when he was coming across, like everyone started clapping. And I think it was Brett Farr was our counselor for that one. And he's like, hey, stop clapping. I was like, we were like, what? He's like, you don't clap for somebody for doing what they're supposed to do. I was like, okay, that that stuck with me. I mean, it's oh, the same yeah. thing. It's like, did he earn it? I was like, yeah. So that's it's something the that same approach. Forever. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Same exact approach. Um, so Fanco obviously has built a good following over the last three years. You know, you got tw over 27,000 subscribers and you got, you know, about 10,000 on Instagram. I could be wrong on that number. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. All right. There we go. I'm right, guys. Uh, so what is the future of Fanco looking like? The future of Fanco is fun and exciting because during the season, you know, it, it's, Go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I, I have a schedule on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. I'm releasing videos and no time to do anything, like even outside of Fanco, which I'm like, I'm sure we're going to be talking like some fun stuff about that too. Like, yeah. you know, what, what the heck I do outside of Fanco. And it's like, it's go, 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 go during the season. And then March hits and it's like, at the nationals, it's like, okay, let me take a breath. <laughs> I can actually breathe now. And, and that's how it is, right? With, with, wrestlers that's how it is mm -hmm. uh with with the media that's how it is with everybody involved with wrestling in any sport you know and so with fanco i've been able to one of my favorite parts is being able to pull the community and actually talk with the fanco fanatics and what they have to say and what they want and one of the things is like a, a lot of different changes for example we're bringing this more than the mat podcast this is one of the most requested content pieces from the Fanco fanatics is they wanted to hear directly from wrestlers about what, what do they do off the mat, right? Like mm -hmm. they hear all these stories about who or, or how guys are doing on the mat, right? We know that Kyrene is a tough wrestler at NC state, but like, did we know that he tattoos guys? He tattooed yeah. himself and his own mom. Like yeah, that's kind of exactly. a cool story that we want to tell. And so like, that's one of the things is, content changes right is is how can we make wrestling better by not staying stagnant and boring to really help grow the sport and, and my ultimate goal and my main goal when i started is to spark captivating conversations with wrestling fans and so with that it's it's continuously building a community building it through through youtube the, the huge community we have there right through Instagram, through all these other platforms, through the Patreon, where we have exclusive content that is exclusive, but it's also more conversation pieces that we can mm -hmm. actually gather and, and tell these conversations. So the future of Fanco is just growing this community so we can really gather and just be excited about wrestling together, but even do things outside of wrestling. Like may, maybe like my, my, I guess my one of big goal that I, I think would be so cool to have is like you know may, maybe there there are a couple of fans who are they're always talking on youtube and or the discord or wherever it is and they're like they meet up at a wrestling event and they they go grab a couple of beers and they hang out outside yeah. the tournament like that was one of my favorite things at nationals this past year was being able to see all the media guys and like hang out with them outside of wrestling and talk about things outside of the sport of wrestling which i think it's a blast so really it's just growing that community is is so like that's the future for me. Yeah, no, I definitely think you do a good job of creating personal relationships with your fans. Some other platforms may not do as good of a job at, and I think you foster an environment where, you know, people are like uh, excited, you know, about wrestling. And I think that's what sets your content apart from others. Uh, but we can move more into the personal side of things. Uh, Josiah, you recently got engaged. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about your fiance? Yeah. So th th the fun thing is like, I, I don't share like a lot of personal information through my YouTube videos. And I th know that like a lot of fans ask for that. And, uh -huh. and like, there's some stuff I feel comfortable sharing with some stuff. I'm like, ah, I like, I like, I'm a, I'm a private person in general. Mm. So my, my fiance and I, we've been together since high school. Okay. Since uh, sophomore year of high school. And we grew up together, went to the same school. She supported me, went to my wrestling matches all the way back in high school. Um, even though she didn't, she hardly knew anything about wrestling, which I'm sure many uh, wrestlers can relate to when they, yeah. they have a girlfriend who just has like, what the heck is wrestling? Like, I'm just going to watch some sweaty guys roll around. It's usually the response that you Typically. hear. 
Uh, typically, yeah. And so, you know, she she came to the matches. She brought some of her friends. And from there, you know, we, we just we grew together and ended up moving down to Raleigh together a couple of years ago. And I mean, she's just uh, she's the best. You know, she she's the best part of my life. Um, and outside of Fanco, it's so nice to be able to have her as now a fiance. Recently, we went to the Smoky Mountains uh, uh-huh. recently, and that's actually where we got engaged in, in the beautiful Smoky Mountains. And it's something that, you know, I've, I've been working on over the last year is not, you know, it's being able to save up for, for the ring, to be able to propose, to be able to get engaged and be married. And like a lot of people may think that like, you know, so, so like my, my YouTube money went towards the ring and that's actually nothing further than the truth. Because what I did is actually like, I had all these items around my house that I was able to sell and I had some savings already, but mm. I, I had all these different, uh, actually like old Lego sets that I sold and, and furniture around the house. And so I would sell this stuff on eBay and Facebook marketplace until I was able to have enough to save up for this ring to buy her. And, and she was surprised and, and she was you know, super excited about it, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's great, man. It's great, Jake, to be able to, you know, be engaged because that's a big goal in my personal life that I've been working towards and striving towards. And, you know, uh, I love her and I love, you know, be, being able to, you know, share, share the rest of my life with her. No, that's awesome. No, I'm really happy for you. And I'm sure a lot of people at hearing the news will be really happy to uh, hear that as well. Uh, so what's her name? Her name's Jade. Jade? Yes. Awesome. Well, congratulations to Jade as well. What are some of your favorite stories with Jade? Oh boy. I mean, I could go on and on. If, if <laughs> uh, I guess one of my, some of my favorite memories involve traveling, you know, okay. going to different places. So for example, the Smoky Mountains mm-hmm. uh, recently, we were able to go there in right there, actually in the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, we saw a bunch of bears and uh, which was kind of fun. We were on a hike and yeah. there were just like a bunch of bears far away or actually closer than you'd think. Um, so stuff like that. We, we, we've been to Yosemite together uh, out in California, which was gorgeous. And like one of our goals is to travel to all the national parks in the United States. And so far we, we've, we've got a couple down, but we still have a lot more. Uh, you got time. To go. Yeah, we, we, we still got time. Um, I'm sure Jade could probably tell you some some funnier stories about me, but, uh, I, I have nothing too crazy else that pops up besides like, you know, I just love traveling with her. I, I love going around. Awesome. No, that's really great to hear. Uh, you know, traveling is really important to me too. Like I, personally, one of these summers, I don't know when, but I want to do like one summer van life, you know, just get it oh, out of yeah. my system. It's on the bucket list. So what, uh, you mentioned how she would come to your matches and you know there were some sacrifices as you're pursuing your youtube career what sacrifices has she had to make oh it, it's it's crazy you know you go into that it's i mean last year whenever i was looking at quitting my full-time job mm-hmm. that i had with benefits with good pay with that i i had had for years and, and was established in that career it's like okay josiah now now you're gonna quit and go full-time on like YouTube, like that, that's mm-hmm. crazy. And, but the thing is she was, she was supportive every single step of the way. And like my parents were the same way. My, my family was the same way, which is like, it's just insane. My, my coworkers that I, I worked with were the same way, very supportive of, you know, pursuing that. But, but Jade in particular, you know, it's, it's just, she's been able to uh, work a- extra hours as, as we're saving up for a wedding, saving up for uh, different things like a house, like she's able to do all that extra. And then I'm, I'm, you know, sacrificing what I can here and there, but through her sacrifices as you know, my now fiance, I'm, I've actually been able to go full time on YouTube and it, it's still a growth, right? I'm, I'm still finding ways to be able to make this legitimate, but like without her supporting me, through, I mean, emotionally, uh, yeah. financially like in, in certain aspects, it's like, I was afraid. I wasn't afraid. I mean, in, in September of 2021, when I quit my job, I wasn't afraid, but it was still like, okay, it's a risk. This, like, it's a risk. It's like, is this actually going to work out? And she was like, you'll, you'll, you'll find a way to make it work. You'll find a way to make it work. You know, we'll, we'll, 
we'll support you financially to, to try to find these, you know, a way to make Fanco wrestling possible. And then like in December, I, I released my Patreon, I quit video and uh, the, the support there was astronomical, like way more than I even thought. And even then, like I said in my video, like in three months, I don't know where Fanco, like I, I know where I envision it to be, but if I can't work hard, if, if I can't make sacrifices and have other people like Jade make sacrifices, like, I don't know where it will be. And, and now here we are, uh, months later after that. And, you know, it, there's still certain things that are tough, but it's, it, it is those sacrifices that keeps Fanco going forward. Just, you know, just like the many sacrifices that, that wrestlers make, you learn that to make those sacrifices, uh, skipping meals, skipping all that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, sk- skipping entertainment, skipping, hanging out with friends, skipping the weekends. It's like, I'm doing the same thing through, through my business. It's, it's skipping time, hanging out with friends that sure. I would love to go out and actually, I, I shouldn't say that. I don't really go yeah. out that much, but I would love to, you know, hang out with friends or, or hang out with family more or, or, or travel more. However, like the sacrifice of the business, which I love doing it, but right. It's like, it's a sacrifice. And that that's, that's yeah. what it is. It's giving up something in pursuit of something else. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of those like an endeavor like this, you know, you need that support system. And that's really great that you found that support uh, in Jade. And, you know, like you said, it's really similar with wrestling. Like, I mean, the amount of stuff that my parents have done for me in my wrestling career, you know, I know that I put a lot into my wrestling career, but, you know, they put in just as much, if not more, you know, in driving all across country tournaments, camps, you know, putting me through school just so I could wrestle, you know, like there's just a lot of stuff. There's a lot of behind the scenes uh, that people don't see. All right. Well, uh, moving on. So what a lot of people don't know about you is that you're really big into running. So uh, I forget, are you training for a marathon or have you run a marathon before? I've never run a marathon, but I was training for a half marathon. Okay, there you go. All right. So you're training for a half marathon. So when did you really like get into running? So I think it's just like, honestly, through wrestling, like through Mm -hmm. high school, it's like running over the summer to, and to stay in shape and obviously like get, getting on the treadmill to cut those last few pounds. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's through that, that I really began to like the running then I think was a little bit different than the running now, because back then it's like a little bit more dreadful. It's like, I got to stay on the treadmill to lose this last pound. It's like kind of yeah. a pain in the butt, you know how it is. And yes. so then eventually, like when I went to college and I wasn't wrestling anymore, I kept running and I kept training. I actually even ran cross country for a year in high school. Uh, just, it was to kind of keep in shape for wrestling. But mm-hmm. then I found through in college, when I started to run more just all around the state college area and through campus, which is like is one of my favorite places like to run when it's not snowy is, yeah. uh, is like, it freed my mind. And that's actually, that's actually how I came up with the name Fanco was uh-huh. during a run. Uh, there you go. so it was through that, like, I think it just frees my mind. It gives me ideas. Some of my best ideas come while I'm on a run. And so that's kind of how I got into it. And from there, it's just kind of like growing, like I'm on multiple runs every week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, like you kind of just, it's alone time, you know, you're just alone mm-hmm. with your thoughts and you're just going, you know, that's uh, similar to how I feel about lifting. You know, I'm not a big uh-huh. runner. Uh, I'm bow legged <laughs> and my knees hurt. I can't do any of that. So we're going to lift. All right. Like power clean, all that stuff. Uh, what mentality aspects from wrestling have uh, transferred into your running now? I mean, it's, it's just like Dan Cable was said, once you've wrestled, everything else in life is easy. So anytime I, I'm running I'm like, this is tough. I'm like, okay, I lost 12 pounds in a day. One time like this, this mm-hmm. is nothing, you know? Exactly. And so I, I think one is it's the mental toughness for sure. Just like is, that's like instilled in you from wrestling. The second thing is, is discipline is in, in all aspects of life, but definitely through running, like being able to have a regimented training schedule and three, like, this is kind of like a, a weird one that I don't know. A lot of people don't talk about as much, but like, it's just honestly maintaining a healthy lifestyle um, mm-hmm. because when you're wrestling, right. And you have, I mean, you're so in shape you're working out multiple times a day. Like I look back in high school, like I literally worked out like three plus times a day. Right. And that was in high school. And then you look at D one athletes that work out that many times, if not more certain, you know, a day you're working out your body and you're in this tip top shape. And it's like, then after college, like, for example, I I went or after you're done with wrestling, I went to 
college and like I was drinking pop uh, like more often I was drinking like the stuff that like you you don't get during wrestling it's like I can't have the Oreos or or the the pop or the Mountain Dew like and and it's great and then you know too much of a good thing is not a good thing and so you put on a couple pounds and maybe you don't maintain that lifestyle that you should and it's you know it's fun for a little bit but then you're like you feel like yeah like exactly this, this is not like how I want to live my life. And so that's definitely a big part is like just maintaining the healthy lifestyle. Yeah, no, I mean, especially after finishing up wrestling, it is so much harder to make yourself go and work out whenever yes. you don't have to, whenever, yes. you know, you don't have to, you're like, ah, no, is it eight? it's eight in the morning. Oh, I can sleep in, sleep you know, in. it's just like, it's a lot harder to will yourself to go. Uh, but you know, wrestling just instills that into you. Like, you it know, does. And, and yeah. the thing too, Jake, is like, you you, met, you said it already. It's like, okay, I have a tournament this weekend. I got to make weight. Otherwise, like, I'm getting in trouble with my coach. I may yeah. like, get off my team. I may lose a scholarship. I may, whatever it is, right? Like, I got to make weight. It, it, it's just, that's the goal. It, mm-hmm. eight, the first goal, right? The, the other goal is to, to win and win the tournament. Where, but that's what you got to do. Outside of wrestling, th- that's why I started setting my own goals. It's like, for example, this year, like I wanted to run a half marathon and I just did mm-hmm. that a couple of weeks ago and being able to have those goals. Like first it, I ran a uh, 5k, which I, I can run 5ks all the time. I love them. But like, that was the first thing that I ran in February. And then a couple weeks later, like just actually it was like oh, two weeks after the national championships, I ran the Tar Heel 10 miler. And like, that was the next goal. And then it was the half marathon. And like mm-hmm. those goals keep you training because I'm like, if I don't, if I don't run today, then I'm going to be hurting during my next race. And that's mm-hmm. not good. Yeah, definitely. So you mentioned goals. Uh, what are some of your long-term goals? I mean, my long-term goals, I mean, the, the big one was like initially to, you know, start a business. Like I, I always wanted to, to do that was start a business from my college dorm room. Mm-hmm. And that's, it's actually where Fanco did start was in yes. my college dorm room. So like that was a goal and I'm still working to make that right. A really sustainable business. Uh, so that's the, the big thing. The second thing is, is a wedding and, and, and to get married to, to the girl I love. And that uh, is in, in the works right now. So that's another big goal of mine. Um, eventually I would love to run a full marathon. And mm-hmm. right now, like I set it up this year where I was like, am I able to, can I run a full marathon? Am I going to have the time to put in? And so I initially started out with the half marathon being in May. And then kind of by the end of that, once I had right during the day, working through Fanco, doing all this stuff and, and some of the personal stuff I do outside, I'm like, man, I just, I, I, I have enough time to practice or to train for the half marathon, but right now I can't do the full marathon. Like in November is when the next uh, mm-hmm. marathon is. And so I'm like, I'll, I'll do another half marathon. So I keep training and eventually I do want to run a full marathon. So like, that is definitely a goal of mine. It's like setting these like little, it, it's fun to set those goals. So yeah. like, I guess those are some of the big ones that, you know, come to uh, the top of my mind, getting a house um, mm-hmm. because right now I, I'm renting a place and, and that's something I'm saving up for. Like so many of these goals are like, it, it seems like they were so far away. But like now, like literally within the next year, a lot of them were, are going to be coming to fruition. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Things creep up on you really, really fast, mm-hmm. a lot faster than you expect. Uh, no, I mean, so my granddad, uh, one of my granddads, uh, he, uh, actually, I don't know the whole story, but he was like declared paralyzed and was like, okay. you're never going to be able to walk again. This was like before I was born. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know all of a sudden he's walking then you know starts running and he's running marathons and all that and uh last time i checked i mean he uh, ended up running like a triathlon i don't know how fast but uh, he did it you know and i mean it's just one of those things uh you know it's really cool to like just keep like pushing towards those goals you know people are going to tell you you can't do all this stuff and you just keep going and going and going so i think absolutely uh, yeah no and i think having those long-term goals of you know you know maybe one day down the road i'm gonna get to that marathon uh, that's awesome. So I, I'm rooting for you. Appreciate right. it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so, all right, everyone, we are moving into the card section. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, we have a deck of cards here and the lower 
valued cards are easier questions to answer. And then the higher value ones uh, are a little bit more difficult. So Josiah, are you ready to get into it? I'm excited. Let's do it. All right. I got my deck right here. All right. First one, we got a seven. All right. So seven. Uh, all right. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? I think I'd have to say transportation or like a teleportation where teleportation. I could just teleport anywhere because you know how nice it'd be if there was, uh, I mean, j- just look at wrestling. Like if I could just teleport to Cliff Keen, Las Vegas, didn't have to deal with all the, the plane ticket and the travel and this and that. It's like when I'm traveling, that's a day lost. Like I, I'm like when I travel back to Pennsylvania, that's eight hours. That's a day off of work. I got to take like if I can just teleport. Oh, my gosh, that would be the greatest thing. Ah, well that, you know, I hadn't really thought about teleportation. Mine personally, I would say telekinesis. You oh. know, I like you get to move things with like you seen Super yeah. 8 or whatever it was. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, you move things with your mind. You know, uh, I think you can read minds too with uh, telekinesis, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. That's mine. <laughs> but uh, no, teleportation. I don't know. I like driving. So like, I drive back to Texas all the time. So it's like 1100 mile drive. And that's like, you know, running for use alone time, you know, driving by myself, you know, I just get I to agree. Sit back I, and, I like it. I, yeah, I, I like driving. Okay. Like I, I get in the car, like my ritual is I, I get in the car on a long drive, get onto the highway, set it to cruise, get mm-hmm. a, put my podcast on whatever I'm listening to grab my uh, cup of sunflower seeds and I'm, I'm good. To, I'm good to go. But there like, if I, I like that, but still the teleportation, man, oh, just definitely get me there faster. Of course. Yeah. I completely agree with you. All right. Next one here. We got an ace. Oh, I haven't drawn an ace yet. All right. All right. So what is the most important lesson you've learned in life? The most important lesson that I think I've learned in life is probably to hard work. I would say hard work gets you to places when compared to others that don't work hard. And I've learned that from when I was younger to, to where I am now. And it's not the only part of life that is important, right? Like there, there are other things like, like talent and technique that go into every craft, wrestling, running a business, mm-hmm. uh, running a race. But when you continuously work hard and put in the effort and the hard work and, and the discipline, you're going to find ways to succeed. Definitely. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what's going to set you apart from the rest of the pack. You know, everyone can do the bare minimum, like, you know, getting out of bed's the easiest thing to do. But what are you going to do whenever you do get out of bed? You know, Uh, how are you going to set yourself apart from everyone? And I think wrestling, definitely sports in general, but wrestling, I think, and specifically, you know, really instills that mindset into you of like, you know, how am I going to be better than I was yesterday? How am I going to be better than the guy next to me? You know, Mm -hmm. just constantly pushing yourself. And I think that's a really good that's something to always remember. Um like uh, I have a whenever Frank Molinero was coaching here, he uh, told us about like, we talked about goal setting and everything. And like so he told us to like set these reminders on our phones. And this was my freshman year. It's still on my phone. Uh, I have two reminders that go off every morning at 7 a.m. And it's beat the day. Uh, and if nothing changes, nothing changes. Those are the two things. And I look at them every single day and it just kind of if I'm ever like getting distracted or something, you know there it is so i think that's something to always keep in mind uh, that's just, good you know, that's good yeah i definitely that's something that's guided me along the way all right so the last card here we have a jack so oh if you could wake up tomorrow with one new skill what would it be if i had one new skill i mean off the top of my head it'd probably be i would love to be able to sing <laughs> Okay. Uh, I know that's a silly one, but like, no, it's not I, silly. I, I can't sing to save my life. I will, huh? right? If I'm in the car, I'm jamming out. I'll, I'll sing, but no, there, there's like, I, I can't do it. Uh, <laughs> like, I, if I could do it though, like, if I had that skill, I think that'd be fantastic. It's a fantastic oh. way to just like, you know, I don't want to say show it, off to others, but like, you know, be able to, to do it in the streets or just at home or, or to yeah. woo somebody. Like, I just think that's a really good skill. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yep. I have to turn my volume all the way up in the car whenever I'm singing, you know, <laughs> yes. I think I sound good. And then, you know, all of a sudden someone's calling me and I'm still You're singing. Like, I'm like, Oh, what is that? Is there, is there somebody in the back seat right now? I don't know. No, if I could sing, man, that'd be pretty cool. I bought, I bought myself a guitar over quarantine. 
I learned like three chords and I haven't touched it since. So that's uh, something that, that's a skill that I need to pick up. That's something that's like it's sitting in the corner of my room right now. You can actually see it in the camera right there. Right. Yeah. There. Yeah. I haven't been touched in like a year and a half. So that's something that's that's my skill. If I'm going to pick up a skill, I just want to learn how to play the guitar. There's the so many songs skill. I just want to learn how to play in one of these days. One of them. One of these days you'll get there. Hopefully. All right, Josiah. Well, uh, that's all I really got for you today. Uh, is there anything you want to say to anybody listening? Thank you, everybody, for listening to More Than The Mat. It's been a blast being here with Jake, and I can't wait to see where the future of this show goes as we continue to tell stories outside of my own and more getting into the wrestlers and fighters stories and all that they have to share. I think that this is going to be a blast as Jake goes on this journey. So I appreciate you listening to this one today. You know, I'm definitely excited to hear, uh, to get to sit down and talk with all these wrestlers and hear about what they are outside of wrestling, you know? And I think this is a really great opportunity for not only fans to hear about their favorite athletes, but, you know, for these guys to share their own stories and separate themselves from just the umbrella identity of, you know, being an athlete. I want to give a huge thank you to Josiah for not only coming on the podcast, but giving me the opportunity to host this show. I am so excited to share the stories of some of your favorite wrestlers outside of the wrestling room. My favorite part of the episode was hearing how you proposed to Jade in the Smoky Mountains. Be sure to tune in next time when we talk to NC State's Kai Arini about his pursuit of a career as a tattoo artist. For future More Than The Mat content, be sure to subscribe to More Than The Mat on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in to the inaugural episode of More Than The Mat. With Fanco Wrestling, I'm Jake Hart.